Hi, um, my name is Mary's Palmer C. Um, maybe I shouldn't have said my last name. Uh, I'll just, I'll edit that out. Hi, uh, my name is Mary's. I am doing a, a vlog now. So a little bit about me. I am an only child. My father abandoned me um, to my grandfather, so I live he here with my grandfather now, and uh, my father fought with Napoleon, and I don't know exactly where he is now, but that's okay because I have my grandfather, and he loves me. Um, I'm a student, uh, that's about all I've got going on for me right now, which is cool. Huh. Um, <laughs> surprise, my father is is actually dying right now at like a, a hospital place. I'm gonna go see him. I don't know how much I want to because according to my grandfather, he is sort of um, a horrible person, but you know, I, I'm just gonna uh, let fate decide. Um, so, he kinda, um, Die before I got a chance to talk to him, um, but that's just how it is, I guess. But uh, he gave me this note, which is super cool. I love letters in, in place of fathers. Basically, it, it just says some stuff, which is, you know, fine. It's the only letter I've, I've ever gotten from him, ever. So I guess I should cherish this. It says some guy named Tenardier saved him on the battlefield and that if I ever ran into him I should treat him with respect. Those are my father's last wishes to me. So that's pretty cool. Okay wait a minute though. I, I'm, I've done some research on him, on my father, and it seems like he was actually pretty cool. Basically I kind of feel like maybe he was the coolest person in like the whole world. Which is awesome that I'm his son. The how that's really cool. Wow. Hey. So, big news. I left my grandfather's house. He kicked me out a little bit, but I also I left mostly. It was me leaving. So now I live in an apartment. It's very dingy and small, but it is mine, and I am extremely poor. But it's okay because I believe in myself. And I believe that I can hold it together. And I believe that this is gonna be my week. And if it's not my week, then it'll be my month or my year. I think it's gonna be my year, honestly. Like I have a good, I have a good feeling about stuff that's gonna happen. Hi, so awesome news. I made a friend. His name is Kufrak, and he's um, really cool. Um, and he's also got, he's got other friends. So I didn't just make friends with one person, I made friends with a whole group of people. So Kufarak has this group of friends and they meet in a cafe, which I was like, that's awesome. Like we could just talk about movies and books and stuff. But no, these friends actually do something different. These friends sort of have this like secret club where they talk about um, revolution. Not against our country or anything, just um, like revolutionary ways to revolutionize your... So I, I went to one of their meetings, which is cool because I have this sort of newfound vigor for my country because my father was so awesome um, and he fought for his country. So like I should do the same. And so I just sort of rolled with it. They're my friends now, which I think is really cool. Uh, they're, they're really intimidating, but I think it's a new leaf that I've turned over. There's a girl. I met a girl. <laughs> I met a girl in the garden. I was sitting on a bench. Okay, I didn't actually just like, we didn't meet, but I saw her from across. Oh my God. I was sitting on this bench and she walked by with somebody. I think it was probably her dad because he was really old. I really hope it was her dad because if it was like a boyfriend that would have been kind of gross and really weird. But she was walking. Oh my God. There's sirens outside. They know I stole her handkerchief. I. They're not coming for me, that's not true. Yeah, so I found, she drops this monogrammed handkerchief and I picked it up 
and it had a U on it, so I can only assume that her name is Ursula. That's all I can assume. So I took it, and I would show it to you, but I realized when I got home what it was, that it was a handkerchief and that she probably blew her nose on it, and though I love her with my whole heart already, oh my god, uh, I threw it in the washing machine so it could get washed because it's really, that's gross. Anyway, um, this is a great thing in my life right now. I haven't seen Ursula in like months. Hasn't really been that long, but I'm wearing my depression sweater. It has giraffes on it to remind me to stand tall. I was thinking about maybe like hitting the town tonight with my friend Eponine, but she's always kind of off doing nefarious things. And also I don't really like hitting the town. I guess I could go back to the the meeting of Kufarok's friends, but they're all kind of scary. And they kind of roast me daily every time I, I go in or see any of them, and I don't really know if I'm up for that right now. <sighs> I thought I found love, but I guess I didn't. Hey, so I'm staying with my friend Kufarok, um, which is really cool because now I have a roommate and someone to talk to, which I love. Um, friends are great. Um, it's funny though when I, I came and asked um, if I could come here and sleep with him. Um, that's why that sounded weird. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, it's been great here so far. Now I'm a lot nicer than the other place. But my friend Eponine is out of prison. I feel bad. She got arrested with her family and it was kind of all my fault. Uh, but so she's out of prison, so we're gonna hang out and she found out where the garden girl lives. And so I am gonna go deliver her a love letter. Oh wait, 15 pages of love. And I'm so excited to give it to her. Well, I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to see her, but I will like sneak it under a rock or something in her garden and she'll read it and she'll reciprocate and then we'll love each other forever. And maybe I should stand in her garden while she reads it and then reveal myself super dramatically. Oh, <gasps> that's such a good idea. Should I run that by Kufrock, do you think? Oh, I think it's fine. I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be good, yeah. I'm in love. <gasps> we love each other. Oh my God. Her name is Cosette and she's amazing and she is so nice and beautiful and funny and smart and she read my page, my pages, my love letter, all 15 pages of it and she loved it. And then we had such a great talk and it was so, amazing and I feel so good right now like I and I felt so crappy for so long and now she's in my life and everything is like butterflies and fireworks and so much good stuff and we're in love she's moving it's hard. I came in to say hi in her garden, she's moving away. <gasps> I could ask my grandfather to marry her. Yes. I am disgusted and like revolted and just freaking. I asked, I asked my grandfather if I could marry Cosette. And you know what he said to me? He was like, you should take her as a mistress. Like, oh, have an affair. Like, ew, like, why? He's so disgusting and old, and I don't want to take Cosette as a mistress. I want to have her be my wife, and I, I want us to be together forever. I really loved her. And now she's gone. Well, Kufrak and his friends are revolting. And I kind of feel like without Cosette, like, I don't have anything to, to live for now. So, I'm going to go to the barricades to die with my friends. Because that love counts too. And if they all die, and I don't have Cosette, I don't know what I would do. Sorry for the shitty lighting. Um, I'm at the Corinth. And it's night, and we had a first day of fighting, and it was bad. Um, Eponine is dead. Before she died, though, she gave me a letter from Cosette. And Cosette loves me. 
which is nice. I should write her back. I will. I will. I'll write her back so she knows. Hey, if this is my last vlog entry, um, thank you for listening. Oh, hey, Gavrosh. Surprise. I woke up and they said it had been six months. It's a long time. Um, everyone's de dead. Um, I don't know how I got back here to my grandfather's house, but I'm here. And I found out that everyone else died except me for some reason. I don't know if they like held a funeral or anything for any of them or what happened to them because that's here that's been good but it's hard to make sense of your life when you just shouldn't have it I proposed to Cosette today she said yes it's kind of weird though um, because I went to go ask her father first and he sort of told me that he was a criminal for 19 years. He was in jail. And we just kind of agreed that he should go. I mean, not go, just like back off a little bit. Because Cosette has no idea and I don't know how to tell her that. But Cosette and I are getting married and that's good. It's really good. And my friends should be there, but they won't be. I got married <laughs> today. It turns out that Cosette's father, the criminal, saved me from the barricades. People are very good. So we went, Cosette and I went to see him because he didn't show up to the wedding. And he was on his deathbed. He and Cosette got to have a conversation before he died. It was good for her. And it sucks that people die and that we have to live on. Also, <laughs> my grandfather left me something. My father apparently sent me letters, hundreds of letters when he was away. And my grandfather didn't give them to me. But I have them all, and I thought I could open one and read one and see what he has to say to me. Uh, seems like a good wedding day present. Dear Marius, I miss you with every fiber of my being. As the days pass, I constantly regret leaving you behind, as you were the light of my life. Please read this letter and know that should you ever find yourself alone, as I am now, my thoughts of light and happiness are with you all the days of your life. I love you, my son, and I pray that you will find those who love you too. Hold on to them and you will never be alone again. If I should die on the battlefield and we never see each other again, you must understand that that death does not separate us. Love has bound us together through this life and the next. Stay as you are. You deserve 
all the happiness in the world. I'll see you soon. Dad.